Is everybody having a good time? Good time, right? I'm Keith Aleo. I am the uh, I work for the Vitis Zildjian Company, and uh, I have the pleasure of introducing Lee Karen. And Lee and I go back about seven or, seven or eight years ago, and uh, I spent some time in, in in Switzerland, and I was absolutely um, intrigued and fascinated with Swiss drumming. And uh, Lee and I met about seven eight years ago, and I told Lee, I said, you know, I'm this, this style of drumming, I just haven't had the time or, or, or energy to be able to, you know, go and study it more. And Lee said, you know, I, I know a little bit about that. And Lee said, you know, I love that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn about it. And Lee just took Swiss drumming to a new level. Um, and he came back and he said, Keith, you know, I, I really want to thank you for inspiring me to do this. And uh, he asked me to uh, come here and introduce him, which is a, a great honor for me. I, I'm, I'm so happy I was so inspirational to him, and he did something that I haven't yet had the opportunity to do. So it's my pleasure to introduce Lee Karen. Um, Lee um, plays in Fasna in Basel, Switzerland, annually, and as a member of the Fasna clique, Sebi. So he's become an integral part of the fabric of Swiss drum, and it's just, it's wonderful to see that. He was the, uh, in 2009, Lee was the first American to com compete in the national Swiss competition held before Fosnacht, and he placed in the finals. Um, he also plays uh, in the American clique, and is, which is the only American Fosnacht clique and is based in Connecticut. Um, American clique will be marching into Fosnacht 2011, so clearly Lee has taken Swiss drumming to a new level and is active and probably the premier drummer of, and, and is completely knowledgeable about Swiss drumming in the US. So it's my privilege and I hope you enjoy Lee Karen. now for something completely different.
Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. All right. So obviously, if you all recognize that, that is uh, the uh, Liberty Bell March by John Philip Sousa, of course, adapted by the Swiss. The uh, reason why I like to start off with that tune, sorry, excuse me, as I strip. Uh, the reason why I started, I chose to start with that tune is it's all recognizable, and hopefully us all being drummers, we at least played it at a gig or in a high school band, so we all know the drum part. Uh, one of the biggest things about Swiss drumming is it's the rhythms, and the sound of it. It's kind of awkward along with the melody, and uh, hopefully you've heard that during the Liberty Bell. It doesn't sound almost anything like the uh, original drum part. All right? Uh, just a li little brief history about Swiss drumming. Actually, did anyone read the article uh, that uh, Penis was, uh, I was grateful that they published of mine at uh, the beginning of the year about Swiss drumming in Kostnacht? Did I recap a, lot, a little about that? So if you read it, it would make a little bit more sense. But, uh, rudimental drumming all started in Switzerland. Uh, the earliest record of a uh, of, uh, fife and drum corps uh, in Switzerland is about 1380, and that comes from a picture, so it could actually be much older. Uh, the, the drums were all military use, they didn't have walkie-talkies back then, so they used uh, drum beatings to move troops, call the troops, wake them up, move them out, time to eat. Uh, and then and the Swiss army, for hundreds of years, was a mercenary army, so they hired out their army to other countries around the world, uh, well, Europe, the known world at the time. And uh, drummers being drummers, we, we, we like to talk shop and you know pick up the licks from each other, right? So as the Swiss drummers traveled around uh, all the countries that they're working in, they, they talked to other drummers and, and, and bled their, uh, their rudiments and, and, and other ideas uh, out to the uh, other uh, armies and uh, drummers. And, uh, right. Uh, <laughs> in, uh, so, so this went on for hundreds of years, uh, probably starting in the 1200s. Uh, th this kind of stopped about the late 1700s uh, with, a, with a little battle that uh, the, uh, the Swiss were fighting with the French, uh, with Napoleon when I heard of Waterloo, they kind of lost. Uh, so after that, the Swiss stopped uh, hiring out their army. And this uh, actually was the formation of cliques, kind of like what you, what you see here with piccolos and drums. And then this, this goes on for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's still kept up today in a carnival called Fasnacht. Fasnacht happens uh, just before Easter, you know, after Lent, uh, standard carnival. And uh, it takes place in the city of Basel, Switzerland. And it starts on a Monday at 4 a.m. and ends on a Thursday at 4 a.m. And it's nonstop playing and parading through around this medieval city for three days. Absolutely insane. <laughs> Uh, I, I actually didn't believe it was 24 hours until I went there my first time, and, and it's, you know, 3.30 in the morning, and I keep on hearing groups marching by. Absolutely fantastic to hear. Uh, talking about the drums, obviously these are not the drums we are used to. These are rope tension field drums. Uh, this guy right here, this is a, pretty much a traditional Swiss drum. It's a brass shell, chromed, tension with rope. At the bottom we have gut, piano wire, and your standard uh, uh, cable. And the idea behind that is the gut is for forte playing, the cable is for mezzo forte, and then the small piano wire is for piano playing. And you get a pretty wide range of dynamics. Yeah, it really cranks. And there's nothing like hearing a clique of 35 drummers and, and, and everyone's, you know, every drummer's worst nightmare, 50 piccolo players marching down the street. It's pretty loud. <laughs> If you, did everyone get the handout? Awesome, great. So, we're gonna get a crash course in, in reading Swiss music. <laughs> it's, the, the, if you look at uh, example number one, it's, it's all standard, you know, Western notation. You could read it, except you see there's a dot on top and a dot below. Uh, this is called Berger notation. It was developed in the 19-teens by Dr. Fritz Berger. Uh, before uh, Dr. Berger did this, uh, they, they learned everything from, from word of mouth or kind of like uh, rote or high, high, excuse me, hieroglyph, which is uh, number two. You see all the little dots and numbers. It almost makes no sense, but we'll discuss that very shortly as well. So, the right hand is on top of the line, left hand is below. If you see uh, number one, beat number one, you see there's a line coming out of the note head. That means flam, okay? Of course, the next, the next eighth note you see, it looks like a standard roll with a five, with 
with the, uh, with the flam indication, so that is a flam five. Then the next movement is, uh, you see the 16th notes, that is a pat of flaw flaw. Now as we move into the second measure, uh, looking at the and of one, two, and and of two, you see how we have that flam line coming out of the note head, and it has a little flag, that means double. What that is, is that is a inverted flam tap. <laughs> so, uh, but they're not inverted flam taps how we know them. When we play them, we play them nice straight sixteenth notes. The Swiss, they put a little lilt to it, and uh, the tap actually does come before the flam, so there's a pickup note before the flam. So if I'm playing that, I could count along. One and two and one and two and one and two and one. Okay? Uh, how many guys went to Dominic's clinic last night? Yeah, first of all, it's fantastic. I learned, I learned a lot as well. Uh, in traditional American rudimental drumming, uh, we have kind of like passing notes are flams, right? Switzerland, the passing note is the double. So you'll hear it very constantly. It almost sounds a little, little jumbly and busy, but that's just their way of taking it nice and easy and relaxing before they have to think about the next heart lick that's coming up. Okay? Uh, hopefully, any guys notice my right hand when we're playing? Kind of holding it a little funky. This, this is exactly how the Swiss hold the right stick. And the whole idea behind this is you hold it like a hammer. One thing about Swiss rudimental drumming is it's very, very expressive. So they like to play extremely quiet and beyond loud. So by holding it like this, I can play like quadruple, double, million sforzando. If I hold a standard fulcrum, it's kind of a little harder to get that. The sound is much thinner. So by holding it almost like, like a hammer, the sound is very big.